the legend that is the Hardman. Now, I've worked with Paul for quite a long period of time. I'm now working with him in the fact that a trustee of Plymouth Energy Community, as well as he's in some, not in substantive roles at the University of Stainworth Institute and Low Carbon Yellow. Um, so I'm going to hand you quickly over to Mr. Paul Hardman and to tell you all about the SEI. That's great. Thanks, Al. And um, hi again, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Paul Hardman and I'm manager of the Sustainable Earth Institute. Matt, sorry, could you just increase the um, bandwidth a little bit, please? That would be great because I can't uh, see the slides. But um, so um, I'm going to spend the next nine minutes or so talking to you about the Sustainable Earth Institute and also um, art for a zero carbon world. So what we're doing within the Institute around this, this area. Um, and before I start, I would like to thank um, Heather Nunn. Um, Heather um, is a graduate from university, graduated in fine art, and she developed this artwork that we're using um, to promote the event and is, is behind our heads uh, uh, during the, the webinar at the moment. Um, Heather's got a really interesting practice where she takes um, uh, uh, waste and um, rubbish from uh, beach cleans and uses that to develop collar graphs and develop these fantastic prints that are here. So thanks, Heather. In terms of the Institute, well, what do we do? Well, we bring researchers together with businesses, community groups and individuals and we work collaboratively on projects that deliver positive impact towards a sustainable earth. So we're all about research, collaboration and impact. And in terms of our priorities, well, we work globally and we tend to frame our research around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And we also work locally where our capabilities can make a difference. So who are we? Well, where over 300 researchers from a variety of disciplines, we cut across the whole of the university and we include disciplines from science, engineering, arts, humanities, health, business and education. And you'll see here just a selection of some of those disciplines um, within the boxes. So you can see we've got a very broad base of disciplines across the university. And we've also got a broad base of activities around um, arts. And so just naming some of these from our, our two schools, from the School of Art, Design and Architecture and the School of Humanities and Performing Arts, you can see that we've got expertise in architecture, 3D design, built environment, digital media, fine art, illustration, filmmaking, graphic design, anthropology, art history, dance and performance, English and creative writing, photography, publishing, history and music. So you can see a broad range of, of areas of activities that we work in. And a large majority, a big proportion of those um, are working in sustainability and um, climate change. To give you an example of one of those areas, if we take one of those, those boxes, so English and creative writing, um, we've got a lecturer, David Sargent, who's really interested in utopian and dystopian futures. And I'm not sure if he's, he's on the call today, but I'm sure he'll be interested in, in hearing what Ed said about, about that as well. Um, and David's also a poet um, and, for example, has had a climate change poem um, published by The Guardian. Um, ben Smith is another um, English lecturer who had his debut novel um, published last year. Um, I don't know if it's um, around um, energy punk, um, uh, uh, um, but uh, it's definitely around climate change. Um, and so Ben and David um, have also published a, a digital magazine last month, which uh, brings together voices from across the literary world and how these voices can respond to climate change. So I encourage you to, to go to that digital magazine as shown in the URL um, down the bottom of the slide. As well as promoting and supporting individual disciplines across the university, what the, university, what the Institute is about is, is collaboration and bringing together all those different disciplines. 
One example of this is some work that we've done with Reba and various other built environment professional bodies. Um, we've developed a six month webinar series. Um, the second of those um, is on tomorrow evening, all around the climate emergency and the built environment. And in terms of the university, um, we, we have um, presentations throughout the next six months from a variety of disciplines, including planning, architecture, environmental science, creative industries, power electronics. So a whole host of um, different disciplines that we've brought together around this challenge of climate emergency and the built environment. Another initiative that we have that brings together different disciplines is our Creative Associates Initiative. And this brings together researchers with creative industry organisations external to the university. And this is to develop novel and innovative ways of communicating our research and also enabling us to get our research out to new audiences as well. And so I've picked out three examples from some work we've done over the last few years around um, climate change. Um, so, for example, on the left hand side, um, Paul Lunt, um, who's an environmental scientist, has worked with real world visuals to develop an animation that looks at carbon sequestration in peatland on Dartmoor. Mandy Bloomfield from English has worked with Andy Hughes to develop a Machinima film around plastic and also climate change. Um, the Machinima um, uses uh, Grand Theft Auto and um, uh, well, in this particular match, we uses Grand Theft Auto and, and footage from the video game to enable a film to be developed. Um, and also Catherine Willis, who's um, in architecture, has worked with uh, One Polygon to develop digital games, augmented reality, virtual reality and digital visualisation around the smart cities agenda. Um, Ian Dijkstra from Geology has also worked with real world visuals. And this is an example of how we've managed to reach new audiences. So this particular video um, has had more than 150 news items from a variety of different well-known people, um, as well as over 80,000 YouTube views. Now, I can't show you the, the full video, um, which also includes um, putting a smartphone in a blender. Um, but if I show you now, just the, the animation side of things, um, but feel free to, to look um, at the full video on YouTube. So if I show that now to you, um, and Matt, if you can stop.
Okay, great. So on to my final slide. Um, and just to let you know that um, we've been successful in getting some further funding to run another call of our Creative Associates programme. And this year we are theming it around the climate emergency. So if you are a sustainability researcher or a creative organisation and you're interested in getting involved, please do come along to our workshop, which is taking place on the 30th of November. And the link is down there and it will be shown at the end of the webinar. Okay, so back over to you, Al.